What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this old home light string trimmer and the problem is that while being used it stopped running and wouldn't start back up again. Now some would say it's just too old and not worth fixing. However, I think it's got plenty of life left in it. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this trimmer, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So this trimmer is definitely worth fixing and the reason is that it was made when things were built to last longer than their warranty which is tough to say about the things that are being made today. The other reason to fix it is because it's a straight shaft which I find much easier to use. So the story on this trimmer is that it was running just fine but it quite suddenly stopped running which is an important clue as to why it stopped. The first thing I want to do is slowly pull on the rope and feel just how much the engine is fighting back. If there's some resistance, then what I'm feeling is the engine's compression, and the more it fights back, the more compression it has. Now this is just a rough test, but I can feel the engine fighting back, so that means we have some compression. If the rope is easy to pull, then it means the engine is gone and we can stop the diagnostic, because more than likely, the rings are bad, and the only way to save this engine would be to rebuild it. The next thing I want to do is check to see if we have spark and the easiest way for me to do that is to use a spark checker. Now you can find these online for just a few dollars and to use it just install it in line with a spark plug, pull the rope several times and watch for an orange glow in the tester. Now if you don't see an orange glow you might have a bad ignition coil or you might need to reset the air gap to the flywheel. So I slowed the video down and paused it since it's so difficult to see with the tester moving around, but there is a very faint glow inside the tester, and that means we have spark. But what if you don't want to buy a tester? Well, you can do the same test by using the spark plug. Just connect the wire back up to the plug, and then you need to make the metal part of the plug touch the engine. An easy way to do this would be to wedge a screwdriver between the plastic and the engine, and then have the plug touch the screwdriver. So luckily there were sparks at the tip of the plug and that means we do have a working ignition system. The next thing I want to do or at least confirm is how healthy the engine is by using a compression tester. Now we already established that we do have some compression, now we're going to measure just how much we really have. Now you can find these online for less than $20 and to use it, just install it into the spark plug hole, squeeze the trigger and pull the rope several times. The tester will measure how much pressure the engine can make on the compression stroke. We want to see a reading well over 100 psi and the higher the better. We do not want to see a reading below 50. So the reading is 126 psi, which isn't great, but it's also not terrible. It just means that this engine does have some wear on it, but there's still plenty of compression for this engine to work. The next thing I want to do is put some fuel in the spark plug hole so we can do a test start. Unfortunately, the engine did not start, which is not good news. So we have all the things we need for this engine to run, which is spark, fuel, and compression, so it's strange that it's not starting. That's when I noticed something odd with this engine. When I was putting on the spark plug, I noticed that the top of the engine moves slightly. It's not supposed to be moving like this. This movement means more than likely there's some bolts that are loose, and if those are loose, that means there's got to be an air leak somewhere on the engine. What I'm going to guess is that the bolts that hold the cylinder to the block have loosened over time. If you look above the fuel tank, you can see two of them here, and on the other side, there's one more. Now, to get to these bolts, we need to remove the fuel tank, and to get the tank off, we need to take off the rear cover. The first thing I want to do is disconnect the fuel lines, followed by the rear cover. After the cover is off, just be careful not to lose this piece of rubber as it helps to stabilize the fuel tank. Also, don't lose this gasket as it helps to seal the rear part of the engine as well. After that, we can then remove the fuel tank and then we'll find two more of these rubber pieces. With the fuel tank gone, we can now see the bolts and we can also see just how much movement there really is. The next thing I need to do is confirm whether the bolts are just loose or if there's something else going on. If I try and turn one of the bolts, you can see that it's just loose and we just need to tighten it up. I would just tighten it up and leave it alone, however, I'm going to remove the bolts and see if there's any damage to the threads or if there's any thread locker on it. 
So it looks like there's no thread locker on it and it just vibrated loose. That means we need to put some on it so this doesn't happen again in the future. Now to start, I want to clean the bolt and the threads in the hole to make sure that the thread locker will hold well. To keep things from coming apart, I'm going to work on one bolt at a time. I'm also going to let the thread locker set up for about 20 minutes before we use the trimmer, but 24 hours would be recommended for a full cure. I'm also using this T-handle so I can't put a lot of torque on the bolts, but if I had to guess on a torque, it wouldn't be more than 75 inch pounds. Please don't get that confused with foot pounds, otherwise you'll snap the heads off the bolts, then you'll have a big problem. Another reason why your engine might not be starting even though you have all three major components for a working engine is that the ignition timing is off. To check to see if it is off, you have to remove the flywheel and see if the key is sheared. This would make the ignition timing off from where it's supposed to be and the engine not start. After removing the pumping section of the car, but we can see the inlet screen, which will filter out anything that the fuel filter might have missed. If we take a closer look, you can see there's some debris on the screen, so we need to clean it out, but we'll do that later on. Now, when inspecting the pumping diaphragm, what we need to make sure is that these two check valve flaps are flat and parallel with the rest of the diaphragm. The easiest way to do that is to look at it from the side. Ours are flat and parallel, so that means we can reuse it. If yours aren't, you might want to consider a rebuild kit. To get to the metering diaphragm on this car, but we need to take off the purge bulb section and while we're here, we're going to replace the bulb as well because you never know when they're going to break and you don't want it to happen during the mowing season. So here's the metering diaphragm and if we push on it, you can see it's a little stiff and I'd suggest replacing it. Now it's not petrified so it might still work, however, it's not going to work like it should. If we try to use the trimmer with this diaphragm, the engine might have a hard time idling and it may run erratically when squeezing the trigger. Before we clean this screen, I want to test and see if fuel will flow through it. To do that, I'm going to fill the screen with fuel and then press the rocker arm on the other side of the carb. Now it should disappear from the screen, which ours does, and that means it's working like it's supposed to. If yours doesn't disappear, then you need to remove the screen for a thorough cleaning with carb cleaner. And since there really wasn't that much debris on our screen, I'm just going to use gas to clean it instead of carb cleaner. Since I do a lot of these repairs, I decided to buy a large quantity of these metering diaphragms of different styles, and the reason is it makes them extremely affordable. Now to find the one that I need, I just make sure it looks similar to the original one. I make sure that it has the same number of mounting holes and locating holes, and the last thing I check is the stem in the middle. They can either be long or short, and this one happens to be the long version. Now this one looks pretty much like the original one, so this is the one I'm going to use. I'm pretty sure the purge bulb would have lasted for some time, but now that we've changed it, I definitely know that it's going to last longer than the previous one. Now you can buy these as a single, but I would suggest buying a 5-pack as it costs almost the same as the single. Now once the carb is back together, we'll install it back onto the engine. So what about the fuel lines and the fuel filter? Well, this particular kind of fuel line is very resistant to ethanol and it doesn't harden over time, it actually gets softer. Now these lines are still in great shape, so I'm not going to change them. Before we can do a test start, we need to close the back of the engine, so that means we need to put the fuel tank back on as well. Now, I've been trying to come up with ways to rejuvenate the gas tank back to its original color instead of this dark color. It looks to be an issue of UV discoloration, as the part of the tank that was covered up has experienced almost no discoloration. If you have any thoughts or ideas how you can do this, I'd appreciate it. So after putting some fuel into the carb's throat, it started and ran for a few seconds, which is great news. The last thing to do is connect the fuel lines, prime the fuel system, and then we can try starting it. Before we try and start the trimmer, we need to purge the air from the fuel lines. That's the reason why we have this bulb. When pressing the bulb, fuel will flow through the fuel filter line and into the carb, fill the bulb, and then return back to the tank through the return line. If the bulb doesn't fill with fuel, the carb will not have fuel in it, and the engine is very unlikely to start. After a few presses, it's filled up, and that means we can try starting the engine. If it starts, I'll then try to adjust the carburetor if it needs it.
So the engine started and ran very well, which is great news. Now since it idled up and revved just fine, I didn't feel the need to adjust the L screw, which is the one closer to the engine. I then wanted to make sure that it ran well at wide open throttle, so I squeezed the trigger and then turned the H screw, which is the one closer to the air filter, till I found max engine speed. I then turned the H screw counterclockwise about an eighth of a turn. The reason is the extra fuel will keep the engine from running too hot and destroying the piston rings. So what really happened to this trimmer? Well, the reason why this engine stopped in the first place is that the bolts holding the cylinder to the block vibrated loose and caused a massive air leak which stopped the air and fuel from being drawn into the engine. Once that was fixed, we found that the carb needed to be serviced with a new metering diaphragm, but after that, it started and ran very well. So my question is, when is a trimmer too old to repair? Now most people would look at this trimmer and say it's not worth fixing, but I'll let you know something. This trimmer is very well balanced, powerful for its size, and in comparison, easier to use than some of the ones on the market now. If you're just starting out and on a tight budget and cannot afford a used straight shaft steel, Echo, or Husqvarna, I'd suggest buying this one instead. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.